it you want on your team. Like that's a that's a college football national champion quarterback. I think this is a sneaky, sneaky disaster for Alabama. And if this was Texas A and M going through this this off season, everyone on college football Twitter and college football media would be like, "What is going on in College Station? What a disaster! Like, do they have any idea what they're doing?" But because it's Saban, because he deserves the benefit of the doubt, because of his past accomplishments, he is getting a temporary pass until we see it play out on the field this fall. But Tyler Buckner entering the fold here and now looking like the favorite because he doesn't make this move and reuniting with Tommy Reese unless he's pretty certain he's going to start this fall and go into the summer as, as the guy. I, if you're a Bama fan and you're convinced that things are great and everything's going according to plan and we're just going to build that Notre Dame offense that lost to Marshall at home this past year and you're feeling great and you're like, oh, it's a talent difference. It's like Notre Dame recruits at a top 10 level. It's not Michael Mayer is a great player. They have a great running. Like, it's not like Notre Dame doesn't have dudes. It's not like Notre Dame is just hurting for a premier town on both sides of the ball. They put a lot of dudes in the NFL. They recruit really well. I think this is just, I mean, I <laughs> I tweeted to Graham, uh, Graham Coffey in front of the pod about this where I was like, I'm ready to just go ahead and say Tennessee's going to be favored by double digits in Tuscaloosa this fall. This offense isn't mm. keeping up with the Vols. Like, Tennessee, I look, I, we'll see what happens with Joe. If it's Nico by then, I don't care. This offense is not good enough. Like, Georgia is not doing this. Georgia looked like with Carson Beck, it's... That offense is moving. Don't worry about Mike Bobo and Athens. The problem or the thing to look at is Alabama. This offense is going to stink, Matt Green. And I am ready for just the chaos that it brings because you can just see it. Like, this is all a disaster and not a spot Nick Saban wanted to be in at all. He did not want to be trying to get Tyler Buckner from Notre Dame out of the portal in early may to address what he saw this spring he didn't even want tommy reese right like he was not his first choice he bounced around he wanted grub from washington a completely different style saban knows he knows what the what the college game looks like he knows who the best offenses are explosion ohio state tcu guess what they had in common against Georgia? like you look at across tennessee you look at the best teams in the sport now it's explosive TCU offense. didn't do much <laughs> well what i'm saying is oregon Explosive tempo. They didn't do much in Georgia either. No one does anything in Georgia. (laughs) What I am saying is if you want to be a top 10 team, if you want to be a premier college football team in in, in the college football universe, you've got to have an electric offense and you've got to have electric quarterback play. All of them did. C.J. Stroud, Max Duggan, Stetson Bennett, and um, J.J. McCarthy. All top 10 quarterbacks at their peak. I don't see any of that without him. I think the days yeah. of being able to survive and just coast with the John Parker Wilsons of the world are gone. I don't think you can win that way. I don't think when you have Jaden Daniels and company in this conference now, you can expect to coast on elite defense and still be the favorites to come out of this league now. The league's too good. Well, first of all, I think Nick Saban has earned every every benefit of the doubt that, that he's been given because this – there's there's more uncertainty now than we like basic basically have ever like remember I can ever remember under uh, Alabama and Nick Saban but like I mean you go back to maybe 2014 2015 like the Blake Sims and like maybe Jacob Coker eras but like Jacob Coker was like a big time transfer like he got kind of some hype when he was coming over too so those teams also had guys like Derrick Henry and Amari Cooper and Calvin Ridley and TJ Yeldon, like those teams were loaded with NFL skill players, which, you know, these running backs are look really good, but the five stars are all freshmen. Like these, the really highly ranked, like ones we have a lot of hype for, like these guys are true freshmen. Like we wouldn't be the first time we've seen true freshman running backs be ballers. Like that's happened before, but those guys are also rare. Like Jace McClellan is like the best skill player on this team. Like he's good. Like, is he a third, second round pick? Like, I don't know. Maybe he might be an NFL player like he's nothing spectacular like Jameer Gibb Jameer Gibbs is an actual like baller like he was the only skill player on the team last year that was like that guy looks like an Alabama guy like the receivers just aren't what they have been so if this if this quarterback position isn't isn't a a star like 
I, I don't know. There's definitely some some uncertainty. But my thing is, Nick Saban knows how he has to win, right? Like he said it a few years ago that like like you're saying right now, like you have to have a dynamic offense and whatever be explosive. He's not just gonna go back to being what they once were because he would have be he would be doing that already. Like if he ha- if he could have an elite defense, he would have done that already. So they've they've gone downhill and maybe that's why they made a change at defensive coordinator but i feel like you know nick saban has a philosophy on what it takes to be great in college football right now and i i I think it's clearly obvious they don't have that right now like tyler buckner is like a four-star like recruit like he wasn't some nobody so he's not a finished product and he's probably gonna look better i think i think alabama still has better talent than notre dame does like you're saying notre dame still gets good players like they do but they don't have that that's that is what's missing at at notre dame is the level of talent like they get good players they don't get as many great players like that's why brian kelly left because he like he needed to get an elite level of talent i think he maxed out maybe what notre dame can be in the 21st century of just being like yeah we made the playoff like 10 11 win seasons but i think he's trying to get a different level of athlete now and alabama typically has those level of athletes so it's hard to know exactly what tommy reese and tyler buckner are at this point so i don't know it's it's a lot to say i i agree with you but i feel like there is hyperbole like i don't know if it's like as drastic because it's still alabama and like i don't i don't know i i can't just i can't say it's like a disaster Disaster in the sense that, like, I'm not saying they're going to miss a bowl game. I just think of you're course. looking at nine and three. I think you're looking at a season where the offense is like 40th in the country, and it's barely getting by. Like, they don't have the skill guys out wide anymore either, Matt Green. It's not like they're just like we saw what that wide receiver room looked like last year. A lot of those guys are out the door, but it's not like you have John Mechie and company right there behind them, and Devonte Smith and company. This is not the case at Alabama right now. They don't have those dudes out wide. They just don't. So Cameron Latu also gone to the NFL, and that was Bryce Young's favorite target. Bryce Young covered up a lot of warts the last two years. Mac Jones benefited from one of the best just trio of what receivers we'll ever see in college football at the time with a healthy Mechie Waddle and Devontae Smith was just silly. And Mac uh, Jones was great in his own right too. I think I feel like he gets kind of like I'm not downplayed. On it, but I'm just saying that's the reality. Is he did have three first for round sure wide receivers. It was like was everything like was on schedule. Like the offense was just perfect, yeah. including the quarterback. And the quarterback would just per- put it in the perfect spot. The running backs were perfect. The receivers were perfect. The offensive line was perfect. Like with Bryce Young, yeah, like you're saying, like so much of it was a. Uh, you know, a ragtag bunch put together, and he just kind of made those plays off schedule. And Buckner's not doing that. Buckner is not a number one overall quarterback. Ty Simpson and Jalen Miller are not that. Bryce Young kept them in those games. He kept them afloat and in the college football playoff conversation. Like, without Bryce Young, you put an average quarterback in there against Tennessee, they're getting murdered in that game. Like, it's just, that's how that game would have gone. I just... I don't see it, Matt Green. I think Tennessee is now. They're not favored there. I mean, if you LSU, you're definitely not favored there based on what I'm seeing to this point. A&M, you're back at A&M. We'll see what Petrino and that offense looks like. A&M beat you the last time they were there. Auburn, you're at Auburn to end the year. We'll see how spicy they look. They might even bring in Casey Thompson as of this recording. Like, they might be a little feisty with their offense right out of the gate. Hugh Freeze has beaten you twice. I just look at this schedule and I think about what this team is going to look like. I think it wouldn't surprise me if they're number one in scoring defense and 40th in scoring offense. And that's like nine and three in this sport now. Like I just see, that's the part I don't understand where it's coming from though, is it's Mm. like, they're going to have the number one defense. I'm like, what do you think their defense was last year? They they, they, they just lost Will Landerson. Like that's, that was the best player on their defense last year. Like Caleb Downs looks like he's going to be a dude immediately. Like the milk, and he kid. probably will be. <clears throat> I mean, he's a big time. <clears throat> excuse me, he's big time five star, but he's also a true freshman I safety. Think he's going to start. Coley McKinstry is uh, maybe the best corner in football uh, right now in college football. Coley's a preseason top ten pick. Dallas Turner is a preseason top ten pick. He's going to be really good. I just uh, Kevin Steele is a better DC than um, than Pete Golding. But you look across the board, man. Like I just 
I don't know. Uh, Trez, your dude, Marshall, he comes in there at linebacker. Um, Earl Little is. It's like, is, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, potentially one of their starting inside linebackers, a guy who's like fourth or fifth string at Georgia. It's like. He'll be good, though. Th- that's not Alabama this football. Thing. See, this is what it is. You think Georgia's going to be number one in scoring defense again? I mean, part of it is that, I mean, they were they were sixth in the country last year, but they yeah. gave up 18.4 points per game. Oh, wait, shoot. I'm looking at the wrong year. I had a different. They had that Blake last Sim- year. I had that Blake Sims 2014 team pulled up. Uh, they were ninth last year. Georgia that seemed right, about right, yeah. though, right? 18.2, so it was almost yeah. the exact same points. But, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Ninth in points per game last year, almost 20 a game, like just over 18. Like, without Will Anderson, does that get lower? Like, does it become a better team without Will Anderson, who was, like, potentially a generational talent? Like, probably the best defensive player at Alabama the entire time Saban's been there? Like, is that hyperbole? I would say that probably is true for Will Anderson. Look, I'm not saying it's going to – and I'm also not predicting they get number one. I'm saying it wouldn't surprise me if they're number one in scoring defense. It wouldn't surprise me if they're just better there. And then they're also going to play keep away. I think the defense will be in better position to just sit and heal and not have to deal with some crazy tempo because I think they were playing a lot more fun and score fast, and they were just a higher scoring offense. Like they were, The defense had to be on the field a lot more. Uh, the last couple of years, and I just don't think that's going to be the case. I mean, they might have to be just because the offense is getting first downs and going three and out, so maybe that's... I'll tell you, that doesn't sound like... That sounds more like 2019, 2020 Georgia, mm. and James that's Coley not a, is, is Tommy Lee there, James Coley? That's not a good formula. Like, those were... those, And those were some loaded Georgia defenses. Like, I think Georgia actually did finish with the number one defense in 2019, Like, and the 2020 defense was good, too, but like... You saw very bad quarterback play both of those years. Obviously, Fromm not nearly as bad as as what Stetson and uh, Dewan Mathis were in 2020. But yeah, I mean, mediocre quarterback play and defense like that only gets you so far, and it probably doesn't get you to the SEC championship. So I don't know. That it'll be uh it'll be interesting. I'm fascinated, but it makes this season so much more interesting. Is Alabama just doing this this off season? Like, I am very, very I think, curious to see what happens. I think one of those things, like uh, like Coach of the Year, is one of those things. Like, I, like you saw Joel Embiid is a uh, won the MVP this year. Mm-hmm. Feels like a lot of a uh, voter fatigue, in my opinion, because he could have won it either the last two years. But you know, you had Jokic doing basically the same thing. Nuggets with the best record in the league, all that. But it's like he didn't want to give it to him a third straight year. And I, I kind of agree with that. I feel like Embiid deserved one MVP more than Jokic deserved three. But so you have some of that voter fatigue when it comes to awards. This is definitely a year where Nick Saban is a candidate for coach of the year. Like if, mm. if, they, if they went go like an 11 and one, I feel like with what we're talking about, Alabama, like whatever they become as the season. Because honestly, if they go back to running the ball, they truly do that, right? And they have the number one defense and they're running the ball smash mouth. For one, I'm just going to be pissed off because of the way people talked about Georgia and Kirby while we were doing the same thing. Like, that would never be good enough. And people are going to hype up Saban like, it doesn't matter what kind of roster he's got. This guy can just figure out the ways to win. And there's probably some truth to it because he's, like, maybe the greatest coach. He is, to this point, the greatest coach in college football history. So, um It'll just annoy me, but yeah, if, if they actually go back to being that different type of team and they can win with the game manager, quote unquote, at quarterback, um, then he's definitely a candidate for coach of the year. Because most of the time it's just, oh yeah, you have the best team and you won the SEC. Yeah, are you the best coach? Sure. But the, the team, people like to give it to that to the Josh Heupels of the world. The, the second year had the huge breakthrough or the the Shane Beamers of the world, the teams had the breakthrough eight and five season or something. It's typically not this, the most talented roster and you won the S and you won the conference that, uh, that gets the award. That's fair. I, uh, we'll see what happens, but it's still early. And Josh Heupel is probably right there uh, for coach of the year. If he's able to do this with Joe Milton, Joe Milton becomes just rocket launcher Joe and Tennessee That's true. the East. Like there's because the narrative it's all about the narrative, you know, he's and it's like to replace, to replace Hooker, Hooker and everything. Yes. Yeah, I could see that. Not miss a beat if that if yes. that happens. He will have that for sure. Um, the college football playoff schedule for not this upcoming year. This is it for the four team playoff, and then we go to the twelve team model. Matt Green. Um, 
naturally a lot of pushback to the dates. I also don't really understand why you couldn't do the semifinals at uh, college campuses as well. Like, I don't know why you can't just keep the final four games on bowl sites. I don't know why that's... You stole my thunder.